Welcome to CES 2026 Watchroom. We bring together top leaders in the tech world to share their key points on trends driving our future. This is Victoria. Today's session is called The Chips That Shape Tomorrow. We will dive into the semiconductor breakthroughs powering today's gadget and refining AI, connectivity, and global resilience. Joining us online is Anthony Lay, Vice President of Marketing from Micronics America. Hi, Anthony. Hello, how are you? Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Looking forward to uh, CS 2026. We have a lot to talk about. Very exciting time this year. Talk about CES. Uh, it's full of surprises every year. Uh, products that wow us and tech that suddenly feels real. So if we ask folks to name the most vital chip in daily life, some might pick the processor in their phones or memory in the car's system. So from your point of view, what's one overlooked component that's key to modern life? Well, it's, it's definitely the flash memory, which uh, Micronics uh, is the leader in. Um, so if you look in the system, every system coming, you know, starting from the big TVs that you see at CES, all the way down to the small AR glasses, uh, the cars, they all require flash memory, right? Uh, and as the long-term memory, you know, when you turn out the power, the memory is still there, all right? Okay, so that's a solid point. Memory truly is the quiet hero of electronics. So companies have pushed their tech for decades to match innovation. So you've been in this game for a long time. So since then, uh, how has the focus, we want to ask, that the memory change over the past 30 years? Yeah, it, it, interesting. You know, I, I started back in AMD years in 1992. That's when, you know, Flash really uh, started taking off. Before that, you had memories like E squared and stuff. But Flash itself has really changed. It's become like this, this piece uh, that's always been required, uh, starting with the PC industry, moving all the way out to all these uh, components that, uh, I mean, these electronics that... I've talked about in every single year at CES, but the changes itself is really about getting larger density, faster parts um, out there. And like you said, it, the flash part is kind of the underlying hero in a lot of these you know, systems, right? Electronic system, right? So, and it's, it's been able to keep up with the needs, right? Of all these industries uh, going from consumer electronics all out to automotive now uh, driven by AI, right? Um, and there's uh, most recently the biggest bottleneck is the is the memory part, and that's what we've been working on right now with a lot of the key players out there, right? How do we get our components to be able to meet uh, in the next five years, right? In okay. Flash. In that case, so what does that mean for Macronics' mission for today? Where we are with AI. Uh, we are on the, uh, the data center side, the server side, okay? Very fast devices, much larger densities than you would ever uh, expect. Those things will also accelerate. They'll continue on. And we work with, you know, all the big names out there uh, to, to make sure that, you know, our devices can meet the needs of not just their needs, but also the end customers like yourself. Okay, so before we zoom in of Macronix, so we would like to talk about CES. So what's one innovation that made you think this is the future, especially in CES 2026? The big push to me has been miniaturizing uh, AI, right? Everyone has been talking about the NVIDIAs, the AMDs, uh, in terms of, you know, the, the large uh, data centers and, and cloud compute, right? Being able to learn everything. That's great. But nowadays, I think the next five years, you're going to see devices um, that in the past, they seem smart, but they're going to be much smarter. They'll be able to predict what, uh, you know, what you want or how you want things like thermostats, cameras. Um, I mean, you're starting to see that with uh, like Alexa and Google, right? Be able to do that. So I think miniaturizing AI down to the, edge, what we call edge AI, right, uh, is key. And that's that's the other innovation that, you know, I'll talk a little bit later about where we're going with the edge devices. So Macronix, I think you're demoing some cool stuff here. So can you share what you're showcasing as CES 2026 and how does it tie into your mission? 
Yeah, I mean, our mission has been, um, again, to uh, meet uh, uh, end customer requirements. Um, so if you look at, you know, five, seven years ago, we came out with a device called the Oct OctaFlash. Uh, and we knew AI was coming. And the requirements of that is much larger densities, much faster speed. And the devices will get smarter uh, itself. So OctaFlash right now is being used in a lot of these a AR glasses, used definitely in automotive, uh, for sure, you know, smarter devices. So that's the current situation. But I think in the future, if you look, uh, our memory will get smarter. We're adding um, search capabilities within our memory. So if you think about AI, what it is, is just, you know, really smart searches, right? Uh, and if we can add that to our memory, then the system runs much faster, real time, and be able to run at even um, you know lower power, right? So for uh, faster performance uh, as well as lower power. Could you give us some real cases that go into the real world, like in different scenarios that you co-work with your partners? Yeah, so so we have been working with some partners. Um, we we're gonna have a demo where there's a system. Uh, uh, that they're planning to put into, again, AR glasses, right? So, you know, you've heard from, you know, Google, Apple, they're all kind of working towards those. Also, a lot of these, um, you know, Chinese companies out there, they're looking at even, uh, you know, lower solution, uh, lower cost type solutions. So basically democratizing uh, AR glasses for everyone. Because right now, if you look at a lot of these AR glasses, they're thousand, two thousand dollars, and we have to get to a point where those components have to come down, right? And so, that will take time. And, and so, you know, we are working with uh, some partners with much lower power and much faster systems, right? Good. So, uh, one thing about Micronics we would like to talk about uh, is quite different because uh, actually we're having uh, our own factory. You control everything from start to finish. So how does owning your own factory like make you quickly develop and deliver those specialized memory trips like NordFlash, NandFlash, at the ENMC storage, we all use in phones and cars? Yeah, um, you know, our, our CEO, if you ever talked to him of our company um, and chairman, uh, he has always wanted to uh, have, you know, a, a company that that does everything right uh, from start to finish. Uh, that's number one. But it allows him to control quality, right? So he always leads with quality. So the whole company is all about quality and service. Okay. So when you have um, your own fab, what you can do is you can invest heavily into R and D, which we do. So if you look at our patents, we have uh, over six thousand three hundred patents, and we continue to add to that. Uh, you know, a lot of the other companies, um, they had, you know, it's very difficult for them to invest in R&D and, and come up with their own patents. They have to work with foundries, right? But with us, we control that aspect of it, okay? Uh, we can go into uh, different researches. So we've looked at different type of technologies to determine, hey, what works best for our end customers, okay? So that, that's number one, R&D is key. As markets shift, we can shift very quickly. We can move from uh, NOR to NAND flash very quickly, uh, de depending on demand. NOR has been around uh, much longer than NAND, okay? So NOR is one of those storages that allows um, the device to uh, read uh, like infinite reads, okay? So you can read the device um, over and over again, uh, like a, what we call ROM. Uh, and you can write to the device um, up to, let's say, 100,000 cycles, okay? And you can do things like random access reads uh, where you, if you're a code writer, that's great because you can write code to be able to kind of jump around, okay? So NOR is used mainly what we call as um, like a booting device, right, to start up a system, okay? NAND, on the other hand, is uh, what we call a data uh, storage solution, all right, so this is where you you store your maps, pictures, etc., and that's where NAN um, you know plays very well in. Okay, um, and so you know the big difference is NAN tends to be much higher density, uh, but less reliable. Okay, so 
in data storage, um, you can kind of mask out the you know da data integrity with things like uh, ECC and software. Okay, in NOR, typically uh, these are devices that go in you know cars and data centers. They have to be highly reliable. So when the system boots up, you cannot have a system not boot up, right? So that's where that those are the major differences. And EMMC is um, is what we call managed NAN solution. So it's NAN with a controller, um, and these devices are great because you can plug them to a system, and they're pretty standard. The, the processor um, it doesn't have to deal with a lot of the management of NAN. Okay, so typically, a NAN the processor has to manage it. Okay, when I say manage it, like manage the reliability. Where uh, in MMC there is a controller inside, and that manages the reliability, and that um, that's even much higher density because you're stacking uh, multiple uh, NAN within um, an EMMC. Those are really the huge benefit that we have. And then you have longevity uh, customers like automotive, uh, data centers, okay? They require parts that are, you know, uh, can be running for 10 plus years, right? And we have to be able to provide those products to them uh, long-term, right? And so overall, it's a, a total solution um, play for the end customer. Right, being able to provide service quality and reliability. Our life changes with AI, so does your industry. So from your experience, since you've been working uh, decades in this industry, looking ahead, how will semiconductors reshape daily life in the next decade? One of the things that you know, Min has been very proud of is the fact that he actually brought big data AI into the fab uh, you know, from the very beginning. All right, so he's been able to add uh, a lot of intelligence, and this is before we called it AI into the fab. Okay, and that's where uh, again he's able to get very high quality, you know, products come out of our fab. I think uh, everything is driven by semiconductor, right? Uh, if you look at AI, where it's going, uh, even quantum compute where it's going, semiconductor is really at the heart of all the innovations and the change, right? That's coming down. So again, it requires the entire ecosystem, you know, especially with uh, with us working with, um, you know, the processors uh, that are out there and also some of the other memory companies like you know, the, the DRAM companies, right? To be able to come out with solutions that meets everyone's needs, right? Demand, demand out there, I'll tell you, in the next five years is hard. Uh, we, we are driven by our customers uh, to come out with faster products, um, you know, uh, smarter products. Okay, thank you very much, Anthony, for spotlighting how Macronics drive global demands while pushing limits. Memory and manufacturing are front and center now, paving the way ahead. So good luck to CES 2026, good luck to your show, and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us in this CES 2026 Watchroom session. Stay tuned for more conversations with leaders and innovators who are shaping the next era of technology. If you have enjoyed our content, don't forget to subscribe to the Digital Times Asia channel to keep up with our latest insights. You can also check our website for more information. Until then, thank you and goodbye.